Bibles to 2 Samuel 12, verse 1 through 4. Let me ask you a little trivia this morning. It's always good to have some input into things, right? Now, besides, besides uh, church songs, if you're raised in church, and they should be at the anthem, and I believe that we should teach our children church songs. Can you tell me probably one song you look back and think that you were taught and remembered singing as a child that was not a church song? No. Where are you going, Billy? I never heard that before, David. Well, then what I'll see you for you. <laughs> All right, great, great, great. Someone else. Ah, uh, good. That was what I was looking for. Actually, thank you, brother. Mary had a little lamb. What was your name? Billy Boy, Billy Boy. Where have you gone, Billy Boy? Billy Boy. I'm going to say Billy Boy was out chasing the lamb. Would that be all right? Well, it does say, where have you gone, Billy Boy, Billy Boy? He says, I've gone to see your wife. She's the joy of my life. Wow, wow. But she's a young girl and cannot be her mother. All right, because she has a man. <laughs> you know what verses 2 and 3 are, you know? Uh, I'll leave you like to share. <laughs> hey, man, I love being able to just, you know, come in and we respect God, but also feel very relaxed that we can we can look and we can share. But as you said that, Mary had a little lamb. Uh, and it followed her to school one day, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Uh, you know, even stood in our minds, even as a child, we have that ideal, uh, the idea of, of an animal, a pet, being very close to us. And uh, particularly Mary and her lamb, some of you, it may be a dog, it may be a cat, it may be a goat, it may be a cow, it may be a horse. Uh, some of you, if you're into hamsters and mice and rats, or whatever it may be, your favorite goldfish, I, I don't know, but boy, we can get attached to animals, can't we? Any of you ever had an animal that you're attached to? And, uh, you know, uh, I, I hear folks say, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I had a, 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 a patient that I've got to know very well through the years, a lovely lady, and uh, I'm going to give her the name of, of Mildred, all right, just because that's how I have to do it. And uh, Mildred had a, a dog, and she'd make me laugh. She had a Yorkie, and uh, she just loved this Yorkie with everything that was in her. And uh, she had adopted the Yorkie, and it became a big part of her life. And, and so when we got to talking, and we got to be friends, I said, we have a Yorkie. This was before kids. You know, I have to tell you that Jingle was on a very high pedestal one time. She has been dethroned multiple times. We still love her, but she doesn't get the same attention that she used to. But this this lady, she loved New Yorkie, and, and uh, she wouldn't have perfect profession. Per professional pictures taken of her Yorkie. I mean, she loved this thing. I, I knew this thing by name, and, and we would talk about her animal. And so as her Yorkie got older, its teeth got back. And the next thing you know, her, her, her Yorkie was couldn't hold its tongue in its mouth, you know, because it didn't have teeth to be able to hold it in there. So the pictures became more and more. The tongue was hanging out of the mouth. And, 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 and and so uh, I, it was just an everyday, how's Brody doing? I knew that, I knew that the animal by name. And uh, one day I asked, and it was tears falling, because Brody was no longer here. So after I seen her, I gave it some time, and I said, when are you going to get another doggy? No, 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 I'm never getting another dog. I said, why not? Because the dog will outlive me. I'm like, well, that's all right. No, no, no. No one will be able to take care of the dog like Mildred does. In fact, I've had people say, I'd like to be Mildred's dog. <laughs> <laughs> Just because of how well the animal is kept. No, I say all that because it becomes part of my sermon this morning. 
Not, not for a little while in the sermon, but you will understand. I feel like this morning, as every morning, and I try to do my best to bring a message that isn't bringing just fulfillment of time, but brings us an opportunity to look at our lives and apply it in prayer. And so I want to do that once again this morning. The Bible says, And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came to him and he said unto him, There, are two, there, there were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. But the poor man had nothing save even save one little ewe lamb, which he had brought a, a, a bought and nourished up, and he and they grew up together with him and with his children, and did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup and lay in his bosom, and was uh, and was unto him as a daughter. Yeah. Now, what the word of God says. We're talking about animals and animals being a big part of our life. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock and his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it, for the man was come to him. Now I want you to think about a lot of details this morning of what's happening. Here is a prophet, his name is Nathan, and uh, he was not looking forward to the audience that he was going to deliver the message that God wanted him to, to deliver. He wasn't looking for the audience of one king to deliver the message to because uh, he was only going because God had sent and God had required of him uh, for the Rick to go to King David and speak to him. He had a mission that was very distasteful for himself, and uh, uh, it was a little bit intimidating. Uh, I found that sometimes those are needful places God puts us in. We don't want to be there. It can be intimidating. Uh, it's not what we want to do, but God requires it of us. But I need to tell you, Sister Tiffany, it was even potentially dangerous because if the king didn't like what was being spoke to him, by the Lord, it would be very easy for the king to say, take that man and be heaven, Sister I mean, that's really what it, would, what it would be like. And so the matter was serious. Nathan had to pronounce judgment upon King David because he had taken unto him Uriah's wife. And uh, he, he had conceived with her. And so he orders his commanding officer that he kill Uriah. He puts him at the front of the battle. Sister Tina, even to make it more difficult, he takes Uriah and he sends him with the shield letter to give to the captain of the army. I mean, man, this guy is really working and weaving a terrible web here as we look at it. And so the 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 the, uh, the, the, the fate of Uriah was being delivered in a message that Uriah was taking. And so uh, uh, Nathan knew that uh, uh, he was going to have to deliver a message to King David. But let's stop there. Let's stop there for a moment. And can we hit rewind and look at a man named David, brother, brother Wally? It's not. It's not David that we're looking at as being a shepherd boy on a hillside that is a naive harp player. And Brother Craig, it's not a man who, who uh, we look and see Samuel was anointing him to be king. It's not, it's not the boy who, who, who nurtured and protected a flock. Amen. It's not the same boy who had a pure, a fierce love for God and for, for his, his sheep and animals. It's not not the same young man who, who volunteers his time and his energies and his bravery in, in, in the face of a fierce a Philistine. That's not the same boy we're looking at. That's not the same man. Uh, come on. Get with me. Do you understand life can change people? It's not the same man. It's, it's, not, it's not that boy who's fervent and naive and loves God. But we find that the David that Nathan knew was far from the shepherd boy. 
He was a man who is naive had been replaced by sophistication. His tenderness has been replaced by callousness. He was not used to anymore being out in a poor field, but now he's living the sophisticated, lavish life of a king that, that is every whim. He can have what he wanted. Uh, uh, he's used to conquering enemies. Uh, this is a man that uh, uh, is used to indulging in things that if it appeals to him, he indulges in it without any type of, uh, of, of condemnation, without any type of a conscious. We look at him and, and his youth is overshadowed by a lot of lies and a lot of, uh, of dealings of being conniving and, and deceiving. His life is really, really different. He's no longer looking at the interest of others, but Sister Rachel, he lives his life by the interest of himself. And so this king thinks that uh, 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 he can take priority in gaining whatever he wants for his own good without any type of repercussions. And so this is a day that Brother Josh, the prophet of Nathan, is doing. A lot different than who Samuel had anointed to be king. The change happened early in his reign, soon after David had ascended to the throne. He wanted to bring the Ark of the Covenant back to the nation of Israel. He wanted to bring it back to a tribal place. And we find that he brings the Ark of the Covenant back, and as he brings it back, he has a dream not to allow it to be in a tent but to give it a permanent residence. But we find that in all this working, and he works throughout his life to make all this happen, but the fate is that David, somewhere in the middle of life, you've allowed things in that you have never come in. And David, you will bring to fruition the thing that you dreamed of. Your son will, but you won't. David once had a tender heart. I mean, can you imagine? Sister Tina, he's so tender. Then he looks back to Tiffany at his youth. Probably all can look back at your youth and you reflect on maybe people, friends that you had, and you imagine them. And, and so David is reflecting of his friend Jonathan, Brother Craig. And he had been killed, he's gone, but he begins to think of his friend Jonathan and he wonders if there's anyone of this house and he wants to take care of him. The story is given that he takes care of Jonathan. I mean, this, this David and his youth is, is so amazing. Uh, he, he's just a great man, but, but somewhere in the middle of life, cold and callous is this David who, 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 who is past as someone where buried underneath everything else that has happened in his life. And so God begins to deal with the prophet Nathan and he gives him a story that he needs to give to David. This man who has not become just a songwriter and, and this man who's not become just a, a caregiver of sheep and, and a friend that everybody would want. But somewhere in the middle of life, in the middle of gains, in the middle of wives, and in the middle of, of killing and conquering, this man has become hard and and so, Nathan the prophet, through the Spirit of God, begins to understand that there's a story that's going to appeal to the depth and the youth of David's heart. How many of you have ever looked at someone aging in a nursing home, or maybe you read a story, and uh, they'll tell you that underneath the wrinkles and the osteoporosis and this bent their back, and underneath the gray hair and the weakened eyes, there's a soldier, there's a mother, there's a father, there's a nurse, there's a doctor, there's a veteran, uh, there's someone who's contributed to society, they're still there. And they may look in the mirror and they may see what they are, but they look beyond the wrinkles, they see what they have contributed when no one else has. And so this is what God is doing to the prophet Nathan. He's looking beyond this king who is just barreling his way through, getting what he wants. But he sees a young man who's a shepherd and very tender hearted. And so, Nathan carefully cracked the Spirit of God, a story that would have great significance to King David. 
And he says to him, he said, King David, I've come to tell you about a story. There are two men who live in the very same city. And, 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 and though they are so similar, they are worlds apart. They live in the same city, but one is rich and one is poor. poor. And so in saying that, uh, Nathan is using some language and, and, and helping David out. He says they are economically on two different statuses. They are on opposite sides uh, this morning. Uh, but but I, I need to tell you that the rich man, his life is, is full of gourmet food. His, his, his life is full of lots of recesses. He can outmaneuver anybody else. Uh, I, he, he has recognition. He has popularity. He has prestige. He has favor. Everybody knows his name because he is rich. But yet there is a poor man. No one knows his name. Uh, meagerly every day he gets by. And no one knows about his story. He strives and he works hard. Uh, but no one knows him. And the poor man with insufficiency. Sometimes he goes to bed hungry at night. His wife, his children, even his pets. It's not like the security of the rich man. And he says, both men had sheep. One had many. But the poor man, he had more. Are you with me this morning? The poor man just has one sheep. The rich man has hers on the knee of Brother Josh. You probably don't even know their names. But the poor man has one little sheep that every day is a part of his life. Stop. Let's stop here. Let's do a little bit of reflection. Do you know that already David knows the Torah? And there's been lots of things about lambs already in the Torah. Remember, God had already said that from the foundation of the world there was a lamb that was slain. So from the very beginning, from the Garden of Eden, amen, all the way through the first five books of the New Testament, God was speaking about a lamb. He would further say things about that lamb in the New Testament and even in Revelation and things that is to come. But we see that there's a lamb, Sister God. The lamb first was given to us as, as we see that there was a sacrifice that is shed. We see that there's a lamb as Abraham takes Isaac. God uh, 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 wanted Abraham to, to sacrifice his son. And so uh, the son looks at the father, but father, where's the sacrifice? God will provide a lamb. And the release through the, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the captivity of Egypt, we find that there was a lamb that was brought in and there was a relationship built with that lamb. It was washed and then they would painfully take that lamb that was a family pet and they would, they would kill the lamb and they would put it to the doorpost. It would be the saving of their household. And so we find that John the Baptist fast forwards. He speaks of Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. John the Revelator said, Behold the Lamb that sits upon the throne. Amen. Sits slain before the foundation of the earth. And so Scripture is like a trumpeter all the way through talking about a Lamb and the importance of the Lamb. And so we see that God has already provided a Lamb. So come back now to the story that we are reading about where Nathan is talking talking to King David about this rich man and about uh, how that he had many lambs and, and so a wayfaring stranger came and was hungry and instead of the rich man taking his own lamb, he went to the lamb that was the poor man's and he took it from him and he slayed it for the wayfaring stranger. He said, wait a second, this poor man, he loved this lamb. He allowed it. Don't lose out with me. Amen. I, I, I love little Jingle, but she will never eat uh, the china that we eat at, at our house. She has specific dishes. Whatever you want to do in your house is fine, but if you invite me over to dinner, please don't give me the dish you allowed your dog or your cat to eat out of, okay? Deal? 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 All right, now let's get back to the story. But this is what the Bible says. Don't lose out with me. The Bible says that this man loved his lamb so much that the same, very same dish that he drank out of, his lamb drank out of. And the very same dish that he ate out of, his lamb ate out of. Amen. And so at night, don't lose out with me. You're not ever sleeping in my bed. We have a spare bedroom. Amen. If we get crowded, I'll give you my bed. We'll change sheets. 
she will just sleep with us, all right? Not that I really like it most of the time, because she has to be right against us, right? Especially in the hot summer, all right? But the Bible says that this man did the same thing. His sheep at night, guess what? It came to bed with him. Uh, talk about sheep, right? <laughs> So here he is, count sheep, and uh, he's falling asleep, nuzzled up to a little lamb. And so day in and day out, here it is. He gets a drink of coffee in the morning, Brother Wiley. The lamb gets a drink of coffee. He eats a little bowl of Wheaties in the morning. His lamb eats a little bit of Wheaties in the morning from the same bowl. And when he goes to bed at night, that lamb goes to bed with him. Are you understanding me? There's a relationship that is built between him and the lamb. And so he loves his lamb very, very much. And he treasures his lamb. I'm sure he pets the lamb and he talks to the lamb. And he makes sure the lamb is groomed. And he worries about taking care of the lamb. The Bible says that it was like a daughter to him. Wow. Can you imagine? Uh, sorry, I draw the line there. You know, uh, I, I like animals, but never take the same place as, as a child. But the Bible says that's how the scenario was. We can't argue with God's Word, right? And so that's the scenario laid out plain, clear before you. That here it is, King, the, the man has a, a welfare and stranger come by, wants some food to eat. And so he has herds upon herds upon herds of sheep that he don't even know. He has no relationship with them. He gives them to someone else to take care of. He doesn't care about them. He doesn't know their name. They're not a part of his life. If one goes missing, if one dies, if one is giving, giving away, what is the loss? He doesn't have a relationship built. But what does he do? He is so stinking greedy within himself that he takes the one sheep that the one man has that is like his daughter, eats with him, sleeps with him, drinks with him, uh, is a part of his life. And he takes that lamb and he kills it and he gives it to the welfare and stranger. Wow. Can you even imagine? How integrated that land was into that man's life and his family's life. Amen. Uh, it's hard for him to imagine separation from this lamb. And so the word is given. Get rid of the lamb. Give it to the stranger. Nathan, he shares the story. And all of a sudden, King David leaps to his feet. And he says, as surely as the man lives, as the Lord lives, that man deserves to die, and he must repay four times over what he's taken. Kill the man! Replace four times over what he's taken. Can you imagine what Nathan is feeling? Nathan points his finger and he says, David, you, you are the man. <laughs> David's verdict will be delivered. If somebody like Sheba would die, Amnon would die, Absalom would die, Ajaniah would die. The guilt that was in David's heart, we read in Psalms chapter number 51. He says, Have mercy on me, wash me, make me clean, create me, cast me out of the way, restore my soul, deliver unto me. Listen, I want to tell you, my message this morning is going in a different direction than any of you would think. Because I'm not here to point and say someone has sinned in their life. If you know you have sinned, you need to repent. This is where my message takes a big U-turn. Because David, if he would have had a relationship with his lambs and would have understood the relationship of one man and one lamb, he would have never ordered for the lamb to be executed. Listen. This story is not, a, not about a man and his relationship with his church. 
This story is not about a man and his relationship and his recognition with his reputation and his recognition in the world. It's not about a man who professes a gift or a talent, but it is about a man, amen, who loves his land more than anything else and nothing else matters. There was a poor man. It didn't matter if he had recognition. It didn't matter if he had choices that were great in life. It didn't matter about a lot of things because sometimes he probably went to bed hungry. Maybe at times he even went to bed thirsty. But one thing that was important to this man in his life was that he had a relationship with the Lamb. This morning, I need to tell you something. It's not about gaining all the lambs that we can gain. Life is not about recognition. Amen. I know that life takes turns and it takes changes. Amen. It's not about allowing yourself to become callous. It's not about allowing yourself to get greedy and wanting more and more and more in life. But it's about allowing yourself to stay in a place where the Lamb matters and it is the Lamb of God. I need to ask you, how valuable is the Lamb of God to you? The Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Isaiah said it this way, that He was led as a lamb before the slaughter, and as a sheep before the shears is done, so He openeth not His mouth. Amen. The greatest relationship you and I can have is a relationship with a lamb. Amen. I ask you this morning, what's that one story or song that you probably remember? Mary had a little lamb. And everywhere that Mary went, the Lamb was sure to go. Amen. Is that the relationship you and I have today? Amen. A man and a Lamb. A woman with a Lamb. Amen. Can I ask you that everywhere that you will go, is the Lamb sure to go? What's the most important relationship in your life? Amen. Have you gained a lot of things that, that the Lamb of God is just something that's there that, that really doesn't have relevance to you, that doesn't have importance to you, that doesn't have a relationship with you? It's just one of many things. Or are we like the man who just had one life? It was everything. Where he ate the lamb ate. Where he drank the lamb drank. Where he slept the lamb slept. He loved it, loved it all. How is our relationship with God that we love it like no other relationship we have? Do you have a genuine bond with the lamb of God? that He doesn't have to perform or provide to gain your loyalty. You see, David, at one time, Brother Wally, knew what it was like to be out in the fields and he played the harp of a Josh to the sheep. A lion came one day, he slayed it. A bear came one day, he slayed it with his hands because he loved those sheep more than anything. I'll guarantee you David knew them by name. He knew things about them. David knew what it was like to lay down the sheepfold with them. David knew what it was like to make sure that they had pasture. David knew what it was like to make sure they had water because he had a bond with the lamb. But somewhere in the middle of David's life, there was no bond with any lamb. There wasn't even a bond with one faithfulness to a woman. There wasn't even a bond with faithfulness to his own army. There wasn't even a bond of faithfulness to himself. There wasn't even a bond at this point with faithfulness to God. It was about what he could gain or what he could achieve. I want to ask you this morning, what is your relationship with the Lamb? Have you allowed things to come in that breaks a relationship with the Lamb of God? Or is that relationship with the Lamb of God the most important thing in your life? The Lamb shed blood applied to our life and our hearts. Amen. Should be the most important thing. Amen. Yeah, I, 
when we think about our time and our efforts and, and things about our life, the most important thing should be is knowing that the Lamb of God is worthy of our praise and our attentiveness and our bonding and our building relationships. Listen, I know life can bring us junk. It can bring us economic hard times. It can bring us economic gain. It can cause us to be hurt by the actions of, of, of people uh, uh, internally and externally. It can, it, it can shatter our dreams. It, it can, it, it can uh, cause delusions to what we think was. But, but I need to tell you, beyond all of that, don't allow callousness to breach your bond with the Lamb. Health crisis.